Despite a Twitter tirade from President Donald Trump, NFL athletes are attempting to stay unified. Tonight, as you just saw, the Dallas Cowboys, along with owner Jerry Jones, are joining in, taking a knee at midfield before the national anthem. They were standing with arms interlocked as the anthem began. The Arizona Cardinals stood in the end zone with the military members and veterans interlocking arms as well. All weekend, it's what everyone was talking about and will be for the foreseeable future. The argument against kneeling during the anthem is all about respect, respect for the flag and those who fought for our country. But as Valley News team's Cornelius Hawker shows, a local veteran says many of his fellow vets actually support this form of peaceful protesting. I believe in the right to protest. I believe in the right to demonstrate. And I believe in the right to create a conversation. Vietnam vet and Purple Heart recipient Rick Oleg tells us how the vets with whom he works at the VA hospital in Fargo feel about the past weekend's controversy over the NFL players kneeling for the national anthem and our president's response. The general consensus was that the president was wrong in his use of language. If you felt strongly about some cause and you were willing to stand up for it, would you like being called an SOB? They wished possibly that, that they didn't demonstrate in this way, but they believed in their cause also, that they had the right to, to demonstrate. Olick says that's the beauty of our nation. We have the right to protest as long as it's peaceful and everyone is entitled to their opinion. And people we talked to were definitely willing to share their opinion on this topic. They get paid to perform and do their job, and uh, that's not part of their position to make a political statement like that, and I don't agree with it, and I think every one of them should be, everyone that did it should be laid off and fired. Wherever they want to be free and protest and, and say what they want to say, they should be able to do that. Olick says moving forward, he wants people to be sure they're on the right side of this debate and not doing what they think is the popular thing to do. As a Vietnam vet, he remembers what was popular when he got back from war. You hear all of these people about here, they should all be standing and, and uh, uh, you know, paying this great tribute to the flag. I wonder how many of those people really played, paid great tribute to the Vietnam veteran 40 some years ago when we came home, when we weren't welcome in the airports with our uniforms on. We were, you know, not welcomed home. That experience, he says, helps him realize why athletes are kneeling to protest the treatment of African Americans by police in our country. Regardless how anyone feels about veterans, Oleg says at the end of the day, vets fought for everyone, those who support them and those who don't. You earn respect, you don't demand it. And I feel like, you know, that's what, that's what veterans do every day. They earn it. And those that want to show us respect will. Those that don't, that's okay. That's okay. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. We reached out to area college football programs to see if they're addressing this topic with their student athletes. Only one school, the University of Jamestown, got back to us and they said they didn't have an official policy. Coming up after whether there's a new scam making its way through the area, the warning from Fargo Police. Plus, why only 30% of victims report a crime. A new study detailing why so many crimes go unreported in just a few moments. But first, Robert, a cool gray start to our week. When are we going to see sunshine? Now, some of us may see some sunshine late on a Tuesday, but the rest of us, it looks like Wednesday is when the earliest we will see some sunshine. Right now, though, sun has set uh, several hours ago. Cloudy skies, gray conditions continue as we take a live look outside on the Coronado.com Valley Sky Cam, part of the Storm Team Sky Cam Network, and it's a chilly one out there, 52. Winds out of the north at 9 miles per hour, and those breezes will continue out of the north as we head through tonight and into the day tomorrow. Already down into the 40s across our northwestern counties, 46 in Devil's Lake, 48 Langdon and Valley City, right at 50 in the Gwinter area, also 50 in Wapton, Breckenridge, 51 in Thief Falls, Bedette, and in Bemidji. Winds out of the north, 5 to 15 miles per hour, and that's about how they're going to stay as we head through tonight and through the day tomorrow. Some Breezy north winds, and that will keep reinforcing the cool air around. We are socked in with the clouds, and we're going to see a lot of clouds tonight and through much of the day tomorrow. Late tomorrow, we may see a few breaks in those clouds. Also seeing some rain developing across portions of the area. We have seen a few rain showers here in the Fargo-Moorhead area, and we'll see more of that as we head through the overnight hours because there's a lot more rain off towards the south and southwest, and that will continue to ride off towards the north and may see a little bit more rain develop up in the Devil's Lake Basin as well. Across the national map, some rain and 
Even some high elevation snows over parts of Colorado, off towards the east, some thunderstorms in the eastern portions of Minnesota and western Wisconsin. Out in the Atlantic, Hurricane Maria continues to churn off toward the north slowly at 7 miles per hour. Peak sustained winds at 80 miles per hour. Tropical storm warnings in effect for the North Carolina coast as well as far southeastern Virginia coast for some effects for Maria as she moves off toward the north over the next couple of days and then eventually turning, thankfully, out to sea. Our hour by hour forecast again, we've got the rain. It's on its way as we head through the overnight hours and most of us will see at least some rain. The good news is most of it's going to fall overnight tonight and then it's going to get on out of here as we head through the day tomorrow. A chilly day tomorrow, high temperatures in the 50s once again, but decreasing clouds from west to east as we head through tomorrow evening and could be some good news. Chance for some northern lights tomorrow night, a better chance on Wednesday night. Here in Fargo, we're going to start off with some rainy conditions and it's going to be a chilly start of the day with temperatures in the, the mid 40s. Rain ends by your lunchtime, you know, warming on up into the low 50s and later on in the day, we're going to top it out in the upper 50s with maybe a late peak or two of sunshine. Some serene waters in Maplewood State Park. Thanks to Eric for sending that in. We can use that as the backdrop to our seven day forecast. And after some early rain Tuesday, improving conditions Wednesday with some partly sunny skies, some low 70s. After a brief cool down Thursday and Friday, back into the 70s over the weekend, but rain returns by Sunday. And it's just amazing to see those photos come in of the fall foliage. Yeah. Like, we want to see more of those, so send them our way. It's only going to yeah. get better. We'll get lots and lots of those, and they're, yeah, thanks to everybody who sends those pictures in. Absolutely. Thanks, Robert. Yep. The North Dakota Highway Patrol took more than 48 pounds of marijuana and marijuana-related products off the street in one stop on I-94. Take a look. Officials say a trooper made a stop yesterday for a traffic violation, and the canine helped alert officers to the marijuana. They found more than 41 pounds and 7 pounds of edible marijuana products and hash oil inside the vehicle. The driver, 28-year-old Alexander Brown of Marshall, Wisconsin, was arrested for drug possession with intent to deliver and possession of drug paraphernalia. A local lawyer and a team of law students are fighting for less restrictive pornography rules in prison. UND law professor and attorney Stephen Morrison is taking up the case for a convicted murderer in South Dakota. He says the prison's restrictions on what's considered porn prohibits things such as yoga magazines and religious and highly valued texts. He's taking the case to federal court, arguing these restrictions violate First Amendment rights. That's what the First Amendment is about. Would we restrict for a segment of society a bedrock principle of this country? The arguments for that case will be made October 19th in St. Paul, Minnesota. An East Grand Forks assistant hockey coach is behind bars accused of groping a teenage girl. According to court documents, Philip Hartwig was arrested Friday for allegedly groping a girl under the age of 15 in Ramsey County, North Dakota. A minor victim told Hartwig to stop multiple times and physically tried to fend him off. He's facing a felony charge of gross sexual imposition, and if convicted, he could be facing 20 years in jail, a fine of $10,000 or both. Fargo City leaders and police are warning about another new scam that's popped up in the area. There are reports about a number of people getting emails stating that they have a particular time frame to pay a citation. However, neither the Fargo, the city of Fargo, nor the police department issues these e-sites. So if you or anyone you know gets an email like this, delete it right away. Only three out of ten victims report a crime, and this is according to a new study. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety says too many crimes are going unreported. Stalking is the most common crime people face, and less than 10% of victims are speaking up. While sexual assault has dramatically affected more people recently, very few say anything. The same goes for domestic assault. Because there are reasons, and they vary to why people choose not to report it. Um, it can range anything from embarrassment, um, which happens in scams or, or many other types of uh, victims for crimes. Um, or it can even just be that they figured, you know, I didn't lose that much property. It's not that big a deal. I've taken care of it now. I'm just going to move a, you know, about my day without reporting it. As far as nonviolent crimes go, the city says one of the least reported bank crimes, excuse me, reported crimes is bank account fraud. The latest GOP proposal to repeal and replace Obamacare is all but dead in the water. Another Republican senator announced she won't back the bill 
making it nearly impossible to pass in its current form. CBS's Weijia Jiang has the latest from Capitol Hill, where protesters disrupted a hearing this afternoon. If you want a hearing, you better shut up. Protesters delayed the start of the only Senate Finance Committee hearing on the latest Republican repeal and replace effort. It was a dramatic scene as police carried out some of the disabled protesters pleading for Congress to keep Medicaid. We just want them to, right, to kill the bill. The Graham-Cassidy bill would end both the Medicaid expansion under Obamacare and subsidies for consumers. It would instead direct that money to the states to use on health care. Senators Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy defended their 146-page bill before the panel. Governors are excited about it. Uh, they see this as the ability to implement change that is tailored for their state. If you don't like the health care you got, you can complain to somebody you vote for. The GOP has until Saturday to rally enough Republican support for a simple 51 majority vote, but it's not looking promising. Late Monday afternoon, Senator Susan Collins of Maine announced she's out. This bill would actually cause premiums in the individual markets to rise in some states. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul won't support it either, but did suggest areas for compromise. Health savings accounts, governor's waivers, put some caps on entitlements that Republicans can agree to, and then let people buy insurance across state lines through health associations. Republican leaders were set to meet with the rank and file Tuesday before making any decisions about moving forward. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Capitol Hill. A preliminary analysis from the Congressional Budget Office finds the Graham-Cassidy bill would reduce the number of insured Americans by millions. North Dakota election systems were targeted but not breached in the summer of 2016, according to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. In an email sent out by North Dakota Secu Secretary of State Al Jager, the Department of Homeland Security notified the state last week. The office provided no further comment, but added that the security measures in place have, quote, proven to be effective. And we continue to update cybersecurity protections as new potential means of targeting are identified. After a tense stretch for the FM Diversion Project, the two states that must work together on it now seem to be finding some common ground. A spokesperson for Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton put out a statement about an hour-long conference between Dayton, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum and Minnesota DNR Commissioner Tom Landwehr. They discussed why the project was originally denied a permit, as well as what they'll need to do moving forward to get the project back on. Governor Dayton's office says he wants to meet with city officials and people living in Moorhead along with other Minnesotans that will be impacted before making any future project plans. Still ahead tonight, we'll bring you the latest on an amazing story out of the Twin Cities. Stay with us.